Okay. Um, so on the front, that first table there, I had you thought, uh, uh, fill in using values from the unit circle. Okay. I purposely had positive and negative angles for you to notice that um, you got the same values. Okay. It's just with the sign, they had opposite signs, and with the cosine, they had the same signs. And with tangent, they had opposite signs. Now, there are several different ways that you can look at that logically. You can look at your unit circle and see that. Remember what I told you about negative angles, okay? Um, negative angles are pretty much reflections over the x-axis, okay? So if you want to know what's negative 2 pi over 3, you go to positive 2 pi over 3, and you go directly below it. Well, if you go directly below it, you still have the same x-coordinate, but your y-coordinate has the opposite signs. So these are called even and odd identities because, remember, we talked about this um, at the end of our functions unit. When we plugged negative x into our function, what happened when we got uh, the same thing as the original uh, function? What was that? Was that even or odd? Anybody remember? Even. Okay, what that means is the f of the negative x value is the same as the f of the positive x value. They have the same y values. That's that symmetry across the y-axis. That's an even function. And when we plugged in negative x and we got the exact opposite of the original function, that was odd. Okay, that was the um, <clears throat> symmetry around the origin. Okay, so... What you were supposed to write there is your conclusion, and I think I went around and most groups got this. The sine of negative theta is equal to the negative sine of positive theta. Okay, sine is an odd function. Okay, sine is an odd function. We'll talk about that a little bit more next week when we actually look at the graph of sine. But right now, that's, that's all you need to know about it. Uh, cosine. When you plug in a negative theta, it's the exact same thing as if you plugged in positive theta. Cosine is an even function. And tangent, since it's the combination of sine and cosine, uh, if one of them gives you a negative and one of them gives you a positive, then the result is going to be negative. So tangent is also an odd function. Okay, now for the next table there, uh, now this is not enough for a proof of these statements, but when you can come up with that many examples, it's a good indicator um, that that statement is true. So most of you caught on to the fact that all those blocks ended up giving you one, okay? And that is true. We call these our Pythagorean identities. So sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. That's the most important one. Okay, That's the most common one. We're actually going to use these today. Um, now, with the second two statements there, what I was wanting you to do was I was wanting you to rearrange the top of those columns were labeled with cosecant squared minus cotangent squared, and we found out that every time that gave us 1, so all I was wanting you to do was to notice that, well, if I rearrange this equation by adding cotangent squared to both sides, 1 plus cotangent squared ends up giving me cosecant squared. And the same thing with the other one, secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta. Those were all equal to 1, so if we add the tangent squared of theta to the other side, we end up getting 1 plus tangent squared of theta is secant squared. Of okay, so on the back, okay, on the back, the reason why I wanted to do it this way was for you to see some concrete examples of this in motion, okay? Um, these are the sum and difference formulas. So when these came in handy was before the days of a graphing calculator, when I asked you what's the value of the cosine of 75 degrees, you could just go to your calculator and you can type in the cosine of 75 degrees and get its value, okay? Well, guess what? These calculators haven't been around for that very long. So, before these came around, what people would have to do 
<clears throat> to figure out the value of the cosine of 75, well, they would need to say, okay, well, 75 degrees could be found by adding 45 degrees and 30 degrees. I know those exact values. So according to this formula, if I'm adding these two angles, that would be the cosine of 45 times the cosine of 30 minus the sine of 45 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. I know the values of these. That's square root 2 over 2. That is square root 3 over 2. And let's see here. That's square root 2 over 2, and that's 1 half. So we have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4, because both those fractions would be over 4. I skipped the little intermediate step there. That is the exact value of the cosine of 75 degrees. Your calculator doesn't tell you that. But guess what? Its decimal value is 0.2588. And I'll show you. Square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 divided by 4 gives us that value. Okay? So if I were to ask you what's the exact value of it, that's how you would have to do it. You can't just type cosine of 75 degrees into your calculator because it's going to give you a decimal. And there's no way for this calculator to give you the radical form. Okay? But, let's be completely honest about this. If they were to try and test you on this on the final exam, really the only thing that I can think of that they could ask you um, that you wouldn't just be able to type it into your calculator is um, they could ask you for this expression. They could say which expression would give you, would calculate the cosine of 75 degrees. Because if they just ask you what's the cosine of 70 degrees, 75 degrees, all you have to do is make sure your calculator's in degree mode and then type in the cosine of 75. Okay? Let's be real. But they may ask you which expression would give you the cosine of 75 degrees. I really don't know that they would do that. I don't think they would do that, but they might, okay? So, under the conclusions, I gave you the sum and difference formulas for sine uh, of u plus b and tangent of u plus b. I did want you to fill in the cosine one. Here's a little detail, though. Okay, notice when we were adding the two angles together, we subtracted the cosine times the cosine minus the sine times the sine. When we were subtracting the two angles, we added cosine times cosine plus sine plus uh, sine times sine. So for the formula here, if you're expressing it as one equation, put a tail on my thing here, the plus or minus gets flipped right there in the middle. Okay? The order does matter with that plus or minus. So what this is saying is if you are adding two angles, you're going to subtract the cosine times the cosine and the sine times the sine. If you are subtracting two angles, you're going to add the cosine times the cosine plus the sine times the sine. Okay? Um, but notice uh, sine, it's the same. If you're adding, then you add. If you're subtracting, then you subtract. Tangent, that one's really weird looking. It's got plus minus on the top and minus plus on the bottom. Now, Am I asking you to memorize these? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not asking you to memorize them, but I did want to show them to you, including the double angle formulas there. Okay, um, honestly, they're not as useful, but it may pop. You may see it pop up somewhere down the line um, in calculus. I've seen the cosine squared minus the sine squared pop up. Okay. All right, but you do need to know the stuff on the front. Okay, you do need to know the stuff on the front, not so much the stuff on the back. I just wanted to show it to you, and I wanted to show you some concrete examples because just looking at the formulas, it just looks like Chinese. Okay, but I wanted you to see some concrete examples of how it actually works. Okay, all right. Now, here's what we're going to do. This is one of my favorite things about trade, guys. Um, we are going to talk about proving trig identities today, okay? Now, it's not a proof like what you've done in geometry, okay, where you have to have a statement and a reason. It's not that kind of proof, okay? It's more of an algebraic process. Um, if you are like a puzzle kind of person, you'll probably like this. Um, if you like figuring out, putting together the pieces, that sort of thing, 
Uh, you'll probably like this. If you don't, I'm sorry, endure it. Because I love it and you gotta learn. Okay? It is on the high maintain. Okay, it is a standard. I'm not just doing it because I love it. It is a standard. <laughs> This is your Pythagorean identities, and here, this is why it's called the Pythagorean identity, um, because it's based on a right triangle, okay? It's based on a right triangle. So, if we think about putting a triangle in the first quadrant, okay, our base angle is our theta, uh, the right angle is formed with the horizontal, okay, so what, our x coordinate gives us what value? The x coordinate is the cosine. What's the y coordinate? Oops, should be a theta. The y coordinate is sine. Okay, what is the hypotenuse of this triangle right here? If we're on the unit circle, how about it's one? The radius is one. Okay, so it doesn't matter what theta is, this is what your triangle always looks like because the x coordinate is the cosine, the y coordinate is the sine. The hypotenuse is 1. Well, if we plug this into the Pythagorean theorem, the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, we end up with sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That's where that actually comes from, and that's why it's true for any angle, not just the ones on the unit circle, any angle, okay? The sine squared of 5 degrees plus the cosine squared of 5 degrees is going to be 1. Okay? The sine squared of negative 342 degrees plus the cosine squared of negative 342 degrees is 1. Okay? It's true for all angles. All right. Now, I have this written down again because I'm going to show you where those other ones come from. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each term in this equation right here by sine squared of theta. Okay, now I can do that because I do it to every single term. As long as I do it to every single term, my equation is still balanced. So sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is 1. How about cosine over sine? Cotangent, and they're both squared, so that's cotangent squared. And 1 divided by sine squared is cosecant squared. That's where that second, well, I think I had that one third, actually. No, that was second. Okay, 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Okay, notice the cos actually do match up right here. All right, now I'm going to start back with my original Pythagorean identity. What do you think I'm going to divide by this time? Cosine. Smart, smart. You're welcome. I don't recall hearing you say it, but. <laughs> no, he said you have. Okay. All right, so sine divided by cosine is tangent. Sine over cosine is tangent. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. And 1 over cosine is secant. And it was squared, so it's secant squared. That's where the third Pythagorean identity comes from. Okay? Um, one note to be made about these. Technically, there are nine versions of the Pythagorean identity. And it's because we can rearrange these equations. Okay, so for the very original one, I can subtract sine squared, so I can get the expression cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. Okay, that's another version of it. It's the same statement. I'm just rearranging it. Or I could subtract the cosine squared and get sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, those are two alternative statements of the same Pythagorean identity. I can do that here with the cotangent one. Cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared theta minus 1. Or I can say 1 is equal to the cosecant squared of theta minus the cotangent squared of theta. And I can do it here as well. 1 is equal to secant squared 